This is the May 19th meeting of the Porter County Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Good. You'll need to unmute yourself. Thank you, Kurt. Um, this is the Porter County Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, today is Tuesday, May 19th, 2020, just a little past 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we're going to move right into the consent agenda. Uh, what we have is on the consent agenda, uh, Kurt will be probably getting the agenda posted here any minute, but um, on the consent agenda, we have approval of payroll uh, April 17th, May 1st, and May 15th, 2020. Approval of claims April 30th, May 7th, and May 14th, 2020. Approval of minutes April 14th and April 23rd, 2020. Treasurer's monthly report filed uh, March 31st, 2020 and April 30th, 2020. And then we have the May weights and measures monthly report filed for February 16th to March 15th, 2020 and March 16th to April 15th, 2020. Uh, and then we also, and I think that, okay, so that is the consent agenda. I apologize. So I'll throw it to the uh, floor for our board to take action. Uh, motion to approve the uh, consent agenda. Second. We have a motion I approve. Uh, from I approve. Commissioner Blaney and a second and a second for Commissioner Biggs. Uh, uh, roll call, please, Kurt. Or no, roll call, Madam Auditor. She's joined us on this meeting. I'm sorry, Vicki. <laughs> oh, I thought she was there. Here, hold on. I'm sorry. Okay, Commissioner Good. No worries. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Blaney? Yes. Okay. And Commissioner Biggs? Yes. Okay, three zero, and the ayes have it. Um, so now we're going to get into announcements. Uh, the Porter County Board of Commissioners has uh, an appointment uh, for the Gary Chicago Airport Board. Um, and uh, we've gotten received an application uh, from Wes Cotis, who is an individual that lives in Valparaiso uh, and has a business in downtown Valparaiso. Um, and uh, uh, I have talked with Wes about the board and what's entailed with it. And he's put in a uh, application and uh, that is what we have in front of us today. So I'll throw it to the board for any questions. No questions. Motion to approve. Okay. Motion to uh, approve the nomination so the of. Okay, we have a motion, I think, from Commissioner Biggs and a second from Commissioner Blaney. Um, any further discussion? Roll call, Madam Auditor. That works. Commissioner Good. Yes. Commissioner Blaney. Okay. Commissioner Blaney? Yes. Yes. And Commissioner Biggs? Yes. And Commissioner Bix, three to zero. Yes. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Um, so uh, uh, we will get with uh, Mr. Codis and uh, find out when the next board meeting is. I'm sure they're working through COVID things too up there on the airport board, but we'll get you uh, 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 tuned into that, uh, you know, over the next uh, several weeks. So thank you and, and welcome aboard, Wes, uh, helping serve the county. Um, next up, we have new business. Uh, I just had a couple things uh, that I wanted to announce. Nothing crazy, 
Um, but I wanted to let everybody know that in and around the Valparaiso area on West Street, uh, this is Bridge 1001. Uh, that's over by the old Bridgeview Theater, uh, the Applebee's, uh, that West Street is the road that runs parallel to 30 behind uh, all of that development within there. Uh, we had a uh, bridge there uh, that was in the city of Valparaiso uh, that span across uh, Salt Creek. Uh, so it was a uh, special bridge that we only had a certain amount of time to work over because it's a protected tributary. And I drove that, uh, the, we got in there, got the bridge done and completed and the road is back up and uh, I drove it yesterday and it uh, turned out real well. So I just wanted to let everybody know that bridge 1001 is uh, completed and uh, the road is open and uh, the, the bridge looks great. So uh, just wanted to announce that because uh, I know that road was shut down for a little bit there to, to get that in. And uh, I think everybody, we, we got that done. Reith Riley was the contractor and I think they got that uh, bridge done very quickly. Um, and then the other thing I'd like to uh, again uh, mention is uh, the county uh, through the Redevelopment Commission uh, is uh, constructing a substation garage on 700 North uh, up in the South Haven area. And I drove by that project the other uh, two days ago. And it looks like most of the metal uh, tin outside and the brick is on on the outside. And I talked with the construction folks and I believe that they're planning on pouring the floor there in the next couple weeks. Uh, so if we could just get some dry weather uh, and we could uh, get that area, uh, that job site a little bit drier, I think uh, we, we're, we're getting to the point where that, that project should uh, uh, finish up relatively pretty quickly. Good Lord willing, it doesn't continue to rain. So uh, again, further progress and further things going along, but I just wanted to take this opportunity uh, to announce that. So any, any other announcements or anything else that the other board members uh, wanna talk about? Uh, here's your opportunity. <laughs> okay. Um, Next up, we have commissioners. Uh, uh, maybe just that the compost sites open. Them. Okay. <clears throat> and I, I think I believe Commissioner Blaney, I saw an email come out uh, from the waste and waste and recycling department. And it uh, sounds that uh, during COVID, and uh, all the time that everybody's had to self-reflect on their homes and other things, uh, our little uh, place there in Valpo uh, between the city of Valparaiso and the Waste and Recycling Department have seen a steady, steady, steady volume of people coming into that uh, uh, area to pick up uh, mulch and drop off tree limbs and all kinds of things. So I know uh, we were able to keep that facility open with the help of Valparaiso and in the county and uh, from what we're hearing, uh, we're getting quite uh, we're getting quite a lot of people going in there and using that service in that uh, area. So that's a good thing. And I think that uh, in these times, uh, uh, these type of things that we were able to keep open, I think really helped a lot of people do their yard work and maybe not go as stir crazy. So we're glad we were able to keep that open and keep it moving. So uh, good good reminder, Laura. Thank you. Uh, one last thing, when we reopened it, we also decided to waive the fees for a few months here. So there you go, folks. <laughs> you might want to get in there before we close her down. Not trying to get a rush at the door here, but uh, again, <laughs> I think that that was a good, uh, I think it was a good move by the district. And, and uh, um, I think this is where, again, we try to be helpful and uh, not try to get in people's way of trying to stay busy and get things done. So uh, thank you for that announcement. Okay, I'm gonna move on here to the North County Annex pay apps. Uh, we're going to vote, we're gonna look at, uh, we're gonna deal with these things. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so in the North County Annex, uh, Commissioner Biggs and Commissioner Laura, uh, Blaney, <laughs> Commissioner Laura, wow. Commissioner Blaney, <laughs> um, the, the, we can all do in one bid uh, because these are just standard pay apps. 
Uh, so we can uh, we can work move on one through seven, correct, Attorney McClure? That's correct. They're all pay applications. So that would be the motion would be through pay one through seven. So just wanted to throw that out to the other two commissioners and uh, I'll throw it to you for action. A motion to approve the North County pay apps one through seven on the agenda. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Blaney and a second by Commissioner Biggs. Any further discussion? All in favor, uh, roll call Madam Auditor. Commissioner Biggs. Yes. Commissioner Blaney. Yes. And Commissioner Biggs. Yes. Three to zero. Attorney McClure, before we move on to 157 Franklin, I know uh, since you deal a lot in the North County courts uh, in business and other things, I know uh, several weeks ago you took a tour of the building and I know I talked to our construction folks, but I did not tour the building because of COVID. Um, could you sort of give us a little bit of an insight of how close we are to finishing that building up there and and I know we're getting close, um, but uh, I know you got eyes on it. Could you give us a little bit of a description as to what you uh, saw and and uh, in your thoughts? Things are coming along very nicely. The uh, driveway has had uh, the pull parking lot has the top coat put on. The parking lot's been striped. When I was out there, they were looking for those uh, pesky low spots that water may sit in to uh, go ahead and get those taken care of. The uh, outbuilding or the additional building that was added in this project uh, for all intensive purposes is completed. Um, the courthouse itself on the addition, the uh, Sally port and the uh, secure parking lot are uh, finished. The, uh, for the new courtroom is finished and I think we're probably about two to three weeks away from the majority of the building being completed, which would allow us to start to schedule and look at moving people back into their original places um, with the courtroom, with the original uh, DO3, our Superior Court 3 courtroom, uh, once that's completed, uh, the same timeline would, would have the prosecutor's office, uh, the clerk's office, um, several of the offices was completed within North County's complex, uh, which would allow us to move people back to their uh, final locations. And then we probably still have another six weeks or so for that third courtroom to be completed as it's currently being utilized um, as it is uh, for Superior Court 3. Uh, so as soon as their original court is done, we can move them back to their space and then we can finish the remodel of that courtroom so basically, I think the only department that will be left uh, will be that third courtroom, which will be uh, not manned on a daily basis, and uh, a couple of offices for uh, the probation as they are close to that courtroom in the same space that that will be being expanded into. But the rest of the building and the outbuilding will be complete probably the next two to three weeks. So things are coming along very nicely. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Well, okay, um, we're going to move now to the 157 Franklin uh, pay applications. Uh, just want to let the board know that uh, items one, two, and three we will be bid we will be voting on separately, and then items four through seven will be in one vote. So the first one on the agenda is Pangier Corp. Uh, this is change order number three in the amount of $47,259. And it's to provide all wall revisions in the 911 center, one hour fire rating uh, for room 021, materials to repair damage parts for both elevators and drywall repairs for areas removed during remediation. So what this is, and talking with the contractor several days ago, uh, when we took over the building, uh, as you guys recall, as, as you all recall, 
Um, there was some drywall and some work that had already been done prior to just shelling out the building. Um, when we when we took over the building and started looking at a lot of this drywall, some of it was uh, not done properly. Uh, we had some moisture get into it, so uh, we had uh, we we had to get rid of some of this drywall on on several of the floors. So basically, what this is is uh, a lot of work that through the job, Pangier went in, cut out a lot of drywall, repaired a lot of drywall, got the fire ratings right in the rooms that needed to be done. And this was just an area between the difference between what we bought and what we were building. And so uh, we, we just felt that it was best uh, to cut all this out now and do it right. And uh, that, that is what that change order is for. And, and the hours and everything have been qualified uh, by Skillman. So that is the explanation that I wanted to give to the board. And if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to try and answer them. Motion to approve change order number three for Pangier Corp. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Blaney and a second from Commissioner Biggs. Um, roll call, Madam Auditor. Yes, Commissioner Good. Yes. Commissioner Blaney. Yes. And Commissioner Biggs. I think Jim's screen froze again. It looks like he's frozen from where I'm looking at. Refresh. Yes. There it there is. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Um, Madam Auditor, did you hear Commissioner Biggs vote? Yes. That's a, that's a second. No, I didn't. Commissioner Biggs? Second on Laura's motion. Okay. So now we, we just need to vote now. All those, uh, I can't say that. Uh, Madam Auditor. Uh, we, okay. Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Biggs, vote. Okay, Commissioner Biggs? Uh, uh, yes. Okay, so three zero. We had already voted, Jim, when we lost you. So yeah. um, we were just trying to get you caught up, that's all. Yeah, I'm working with the, I'm in the county building nationally. I'm working with a, a delay because of the steel roof. So bear with me. Yeah, we, we experienced this the last time. I think we have probably some county folks in the building that are probably streaming this as well. So uh may want to um find a, a good place but good luck <laughs> okay uh number two uh on the list is uh ec babilla and ec babilla is the roofer on this project and i talked a little bit about uh this change order as well with skillman uh, this was at the top of the, I think when we first bought the building and we did our analysis on it, uh, we were, we thought that uh, we would not, we would not need to do much work on the roof. Um, and then uh, once we got into the building and, and started taking a look at where a lot of rooftop units and other things were to go, um, we, we could have probably patched a lot of things but we felt that since we were spending so much money on renovating this building, that it would be sort of penny wise and, and you know, dollar foolish or whatever the, the expression is to uh, not put a new roof on it and start at the beginning. Uh, we were just afraid that we would be chasing water leaks around forever uh, on an older roof. So we've gone ahead and uh, have, have, have fit a new roof into the budget of this building. Uh, one of the things that uh, needed to be done is in around the area of the outside area of the roof, there's metal cap that goes on there. That metal cap actually has to be fastened to some type of substrate structure, wood or whatever. Uh, they did not have that up there at the time. So uh, when we put a new metal cap on and a new roof, 
Uh, this was the price to go around the entire building and put all new wood backing in and everything else for the metal cap. So basically now we have a whole new roof and a whole new metal cap. And that's what the difference is for that dollar amount was to see that metal cap and that backing work. Motion to approve change order number one for EC Babilla. Second. Okay, we have Commissioner Blaney motion and Jim uh, Commissioner Biggs second. Uh, Madam Auditor. Commissioner Good. Yes. Commissioner Blaney. Yes. And Commissioner Biggs. Yes. Three to zero. Okay, the next one is Continental Electric. This is change order number two in the amount of $37,683. This is to provide uh, 911 power revisions, temporary power to existing furnaces. That was so we could have construction heat during the project uh, to wire up our existing furnaces in there and, and keep heat in the building. Uh, we, we revised a lot of circuit breakers for our condensing units uh, that we got when we uh, bought the building. Uh, and we have uh, some revised wiring to the elevators that needed to take place that wasn't done properly when we bought the building. Um, so uh, we, there's a lot of electrical work in there that was basically uh, fixing some of the things that were already there and uh, taking care of other things uh, in the 911 center uh, because obviously there's a lot of uh, power, uh, unique power situations going on in the 911 and we're still uh, working through a lot of those things on that floor. So that is the breakdown of the electrical change order um, for uh, explanation for you all. Thank you. Thank you for the breakdown. And I will make a motion to approve change order number two for Continental Electric. Well, I Did will you catch that. Second. There we go. There we go. We got it. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Madam Auditor. Commissioner. Yes. Commissioner Blaney? Yes. And Commissioner Biggs? Yes. <laughs> Three to zero. Okay, so now we go through pay, uh, number four on the, on the agenda, number four through seven. Uh, we can vote on all at once. These are just standard pay apps uh, for the job, uh, the dollar amounts and the remaining balances are on the agenda. So I'll put it to the floor uh, for the board to take action. Motion to approve change orders at 157 Franklin Street, excuse me, not change orders, pay apps, um, numbers four through seven as noted on our agenda. Second your motion, Commissioner Blaney. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We got a motion in a second. Thank you, Jim. Uh, all those in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Madam Auditor. Yes, Commissioner Good. Yes. Commissioner Blaney. Yes. And Commissioner Biggs. Yes. Three to zero. Okay, thank you. Um, now we're going to move in, uh, move a little faster here. We have uh, this is for EMA. Uh, and what this is, is the Porter County Shoreline Disaster Emergency Declaration and Travel dis, uh, Restrictions. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, this is something that uh, the county had declared uh, quite some time ago uh, for the Shoreline Disaster Declaration and Travel Restrictions. Um, and uh, as you might or might not know, uh, these um, emergency declarations only last 30 days at a time. Uh, so we're basically coming back in our uh, monthly meeting again, and we're, uh, we're going to be acting on the next 30 days for this to keep this in place uh, to, uh, you know, for the area up there um, for whatever need. So that's what this is. It's a thir another 30 day extension of the shoreline disaster emergency declaration and travel restriction. Did I say that right, Attorney McClure? You did. 
Motion to approve as discussed. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second, Madam Auditor. Commissioner Good? Yes. Commissioner Blaney? Yes. And Commissioner Biggs? Yes. Three to zero. Thank you. Next up is uh, E911 department. Um, and uh, what we have here, I'll, I'll turn it over to Attorney McClure to give the uh, uh, description. Uh, I know you've looked at the contract and I know we've, uh, we, we moved on something similar to this about four months ago uh, in the downtown courthouse. But uh, Scott, I'll let you uh, give the update here. Well, ironically, we addressed this several months ago also with the adopt with the Valparaiso Courthouse. Unfortunately, due to the installation date and the invoice date and the end of the year, that appropriation that had already been done through the council and the commissioners uh, expired. So the first additional appropriation from front 1222, we've already done one time. It's just uh, this time was a little bit less because the Valpo Courthouse was in the first time around. The second... Okay. The second additional, and both of these are coming from non-general funds, it's coming from the um, uh, fee-based, uh, the, the 911 uh, fee-based fund uh, from the uh, home phones and from the cellular phones, the fees that come to 911 for that. So both of these would be coming from that particular fund of money. The second request is for the, uh, is for the analog, um, logging recorder uh, that was out of life and we had to replace. So those are the two requests for the additionals that then would be put on the next council meeting in June. Can I so, make a motion for both of these at the same time? Yes. A motion to approve both additionals noted on our agenda for 911. Second your motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second discussion. Um, Attorney McClure, so the 80,792, that is for the bi-directionals for both the courthouse and the juvenile detention center. It was for, this one is, uh, uh, this might be for both and they just didn't get paid because of the invoice date being at the end of the year. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I just, Wanted to clarify that, so uh, Madam Auditor. Yes, Commissioner Good? Yes. Commissioner Blaney? Yes. And Commissioner Biggs? We've lost Commissioner Biggs temporarily. Okay. <clears throat> so two to zero, or will we wait for Commissioner Biggs to come back? The motion passed two to zero. Okay. Okay, moving on, uh, we have uh, Ray Cloyd facilities. Uh, what we have here is uh, some uh, disposal service agreements for, the, count, uh, uh, for the, the following buildings. We have the juvenile detention center uh, for $225 a month for uh, disposal service. Memorial Opera House in the uh, amount of $68 per month, Sheriff's Department in Jail in the amount of $434 per month, North County Annex in the amount of $96 per month, and the EMA Hazmat Building in the amount of $42 a month. And uh, this would be all under buildings facilities. Motion to approve the five disposal agreements. And I will second, uh, Madam Auditor. Okay, Commissioner Good. Yes. And Commissioner Blaney. Yes, and I believe that Jim is back. Okay, Commissioner and Commissioner Biggs. Yeah. yeah, you picked me. I lost. Yes. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep your words short. You don't know whether you're going to yeah. go or not. I mean, it's like, that <laughs> yeah, is. This is brutal. Brutal. 
Okay, um, and then we have on this department too, we have FE Moran Fire Protection. Uh, this is a life safety system inspection and testing for the county government buildings for three years. I'm glad to see we were finally able to get all of our fire protection and testing under one contract. I know that had taken us a while to work through a lot of our different services agreements, but this is the best way to go and it gives us the best pricing and the best accountability uh, for a uh, fire protection uh, service provider for us. So uh, this, this looks good. Uh, Attorney McClure, have you reviewed the contract? I have, and it's in good form. Okay, good. I'll throw it to the floor for action. Motion to approve. Second. Madam Auditor? Yes, Commissioner Good. Yes. Commissioner Blaney? Yes. And Commissioner Biggs? Yes. Three to zero. Thank you. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to, to give a shout out to our buildings facilities department. Uh, they have been spectacular through all this. I, I, I can't even begin to tell the citizens of this county the amount of work that these gentlemen have done over this time period. They're making plexiglass. They're, I mean, when, when we open up the county building, um, we're going to be People are gonna be surprised because the building is now all painted on the inside. Uh, we have some new uh, signage and some new other things, but uh, they've been, you know, they've been out in the jail dealing with uh, all the situations that, that are happening out there during all this. But uh, I know they've, they've, uh, they've just about been everywhere. A lot of the cleaning protocols, a lot of, I mean, they're, they're sort of at the epicenter of all this for us. And I can certainly say without this department, uh, they have made things so much uh, uh, easier for us to implement and uh, they're, they're self thinkers, they're smart. And I just would really appreciate their, what they've done through all this and, and not one complaint, not whatever. So uh, Ray Cloy and, and the gang, thank you so much for everything you've done and, and will continue to do. Um, but I just wanted to give a shout out. I didn't know if any of the other commissioners wanted to say something too. I will yeah, echo okay. that phrase. I saw a couple of the custodial staff women yesterday in the building and they're just chipper and positive as always. And the building was spotless. And I know they've really had to up their game and I appreciate it. Uh, I agree with, uh, both Laura and uh, Jeff's uh, statements. So, and that was a, an all-female crew who, who painted the interior of the building. So needless to say, they didn't leave a mess. <laughs> <laughs> that answers everything. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Okay. Um, thank you again, Ray and everybody, though. This has been a Herculean task and uh, it's just, it's just great when a team comes together and it's, it's just, it, it's very heartwarming, at least from the world I come from. And I'm sure uh, everybody in the government building feels the same way. So um, next up is development and stormwater management. Bob Thompson's the director. Uh, first up, we have an NDOT local roads and bridge matching grant agreement. Uh, Scott, uh, do, is, is, oh, is Bob on or is it just you? Um, it's just me. This is the uh, paperwork for the uh, local roads um, for the state matching grant that for a half a million dollars. This is the formal part of uh, approving that agreement. Uh, so th this is something that we're all aware of and excited for. Okay. So I'll put it to the floor for the board to take action. Motion to approve. Always happy to approve grants that are coming our way. Yeah. Yes, uh, second the motion. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Madam Auditor. Commissioner Good. Yes. Commissioner Blaney. Yes. And Commissioner Biggs. Yes. Three to zero. 
Thank you. Um, last uh, up here, we have an interlocal agreement with the city of Hobart for reconstruction and a right of way along County Ride Road, uh, along County Line Road, US 6 to just south of County 700 North. Uh, Attorney McClure, would you give, I know I asked you what this was for, so maybe you can share with the board. Yeah, the, the, the city of Hobart um, on County Line Road is doing a significant drainage project. As part of that drainage project, because they're right on County Line Road, part of the right of way that there will be accessing um, is on our side of County Line Road, which is why we need to do an interlocal agreement with the city of Hobart. Uh, on the reconstruction of the right of way along the county road. We are not at this point participating in the project, but because it's our, um, our right of way on our side, uh, this is the type of agreement that needs to be uh, approved so that that can continue on. Okay, thank you. Any comments from uh, Attorney McClure? Throw it to the floor for action. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second, Madam Auditor. Commissioner Good? Yes. Commissioner Blaney? Yes. And Commissioner Biggs? Yes. <laughs> wow. That that got through yes. the line. It came through. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and with that, um, we, we get to the end of our uh, agenda. I would like to uh, make uh, another announcement here at the end of the meeting um, regarding uh, the county building, we're going to be sending out a press release after this meeting today that we'll be giving instructions uh, on when we'll be reopening. Uh, but uh, right now it appears that our testing of all of our county employees will be completed by this Friday. Um, and we plan on uh, coming back to uh, the, the county employees coming back to work on Tuesday after Memorial Day um, and uh, we will, the county building will stay closed for one additional week, that short week while we're uh, reclaiming all of our employees and getting them back into the office, uh, getting them familiar with a lot of the work rules and the COVID rules and uh, a lot of the departments now have plexiglass and have other things that have gone on while they've been gone. Uh, so we're going to stay, the building will stay closed to the public. Uh, we will uh, do appointments uh, for that week. Uh, so if you do want to have, meet with someone, you could set up an appointment that week. Um, we will, uh, we will have masks in common areas. It will all be outlined in, in the email coming. Um, but uh, we'll also have enhanced cleaning protocols I know the buildings facilities department has been getting a lot of the, the products and the, and, and the things that we need for, for, for cleaning uh, within their own offices and their own areas. Uh, we're getting that all put together with new cleaning instructions. We will also have uh, thermometers uh, that we can uh, and logs that we can and test our people back and forth as they come to work and, and what have you. So uh, we have all the things in place, uh, but uh, if you're a county employee and you're watching this, uh, you will all be called back to work on Tuesday, uh, after the day after Memorial Day, and uh, the county building will be closed for that week. But we will we will start allowing appointments. And as people, there's a whole protocol that we'll be laying out. But this is the announcement today for that that will take place. So I just wanted to make sure uh, that that we've made that announcement. Like I said, there will be a press release and there will be internal communications. Uh, to the different departments uh, as we go forward. So um, well, it's, 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 it's a good thing. I think it's good that we're able to, to, we were able to test our employees and get everybody back. So we sort of have a, a new starting point, a new beginning from uh, Tuesday when we take, uh, take uh, 
when we come back to the building. But again, I wanna make it very clear to the public that the building will be closed that short week after Memorial Day. Uh, we, will, we will take appointments. So, uh, but then after that week, uh, the county building will be open. Uh, give us a few days to do a trial run and work through some of the things that the new normal and uh, then we'll be inviting uh, the public back into the building, um, you know, after after that week. So um, anything that you wanted to add to that, Laura or Scott or Commissioner Blake, uh, Commissioner Bakes? Well, I appreciate that all the work everyone has done from home and on their skeleton crews. We really have still managed to crank a work product out which has taken a lot of extra effort from everyone. And I appreciate that. I think all of the commissioners do. I can speak for them when I say that. And also I'm really looking forward to see everyone, seeing everyone. It's been a long couple of months. I'll say. A um, lot of work uh, has gone into this, but uh, we just want to thank everybody, uh, you know, th those workers that were coming in, the skeleton crews that I know has done a yeoman's work. I know I stopped and saw one of the folks in the recorder's office the other day, and they said that they're busier than ever because of the low interest rates and the refinances going on, uh, the tax bills that need to be paid, a uh, lot of other things uh, that, that are going on in the county. And uh, I, I, I think it's, it's, I'm glad that we're, we're able to slowly uh, roll this thing back and get back to work and do it cautiously. And I think, uh, I think we're gonna um, come back as, as, uh, uh, as organized as we went out. So uh, again, I, I, I appreciate uh, everybody's help, uh, like Laura said. So with that, um, I think this board uh, is done for the day as Attorney McClure. Did you have anything that we've missed? I know there's been a lot of stuff going on the last few weeks, but have we missed anything? No, we are currently testing as we sit Tuesday with our current plan, obviously uh, with the plan on opening for Tuesday or having all of the employees return to a normal work schedule. On Tuesday, we will continue the employee testing. It's happening, happened yesterday. It's gonna continue all week long. Uh, we're looking at probably around very close to 90 a day happening. So that's progressing. And as, as things keep going as they are, I think we're on a good plan uh, for next week. And um, it's been quite an effort uh, to, well, I guess that would be a significant understatement. It's been quite a Herculean effort to get this done in the time period that it's been done and, re and realistically how smooth it has been for the employees uh, to get this done. Um, everyone knows it's not fun and everyone knows at this point that it's something that we're trying to do to protect everybody. So I just appreciate everyone's cooperation and how well the testing got put together and, and organized. So I appreciate all the hard work that went into that. Yes, and I'd like to add a special shout out to Rhonda Young in our HR department because she largely put the schedule together and everything came together quick. Um, so she had a lot of work to do and it, it seemed almost seamless. So very much appreciated and also appreciate all the employees heading over there. Wasn't a fun test, but it was quick and we can all go back feeling re reasonably secure and safe. Yep, I know Laura and I were tested. Uh, I was tested last Thursday and I came out negative. And so uh, for me, I know that was sort of a refreshing uh, point in my life that, uh, you know, now that as I go forward, I know that uh, if anything happens, it's on me. And uh, so, you know, that's uh, accountability is what we're all, what this is all about. And uh, I would also like to make another shout out to uh, the man behind the curtain and that's Kurt Ellis. Uh, Kurt has been the one that is doing a lot of the messaging and our press releases. And uh, this stuff is not easy to write. It's not easy to put in a fashion that makes sense. And uh, we're very fortunate that we have a guy like Kurt uh, back here. And uh, 
uh, helping us. Uh, and, and he gets calls all times a night, all times a day. Uh, and so thank you, Kurt, as well. Uh, Rhonda and Kurt um, have just been uh, wonderful through all this, and I can't say enough uh, about them. So thank you. Um, and, and with that, I think that uh, I think we've given out all the accolades that we could give it. We're all anxious to get back to work and do the business of the county and let everybody else sort of slowly uh, enter their way back into life as we know it. And uh, let's be positive, uh, let's be responsible, and uh, let's, let's move forward and uh, let's keep the numbers down and uh, keep our eye on the ball. So uh, thank you. And uh, you'll be seeing us, I'm sure, soon. But thank you for tuning in today. And uh, uh, with that, this board stands in recess.